Welcome to The Importance and Power of Reading. I'm Michelle, the computer lady, your host. During some awful dark times in America, black people were denied the ability to read, to learn how to read, to write or to even own books. And that has hampered our communities up until this day. Now we're gonna have important conversations about the importance and power of reading. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me for this segment on the importance of power of reading. Today, I have a dynamic guest. I want to surprise you, but I have to say his name for those of you that are watching that might know him. Today, our guest on the importance of power of reading is Jay Nolan. Yes, the one, the only Jay Nolan. Jay, thank you so much. Jay, for all the young people that might not know you, please tell everybody about yourself. Yeah, I tell you what, Michelle, so great to be here. Jay Nolan, you know, originally from Kentucky, grew up on a farm, and I never would have imagined growing up on that farm at the beginning that I'd end up, you know, getting an opportunity to play professional baseball for six plus years, four years with the with the San Diego Padres, one with the Colorado Rockies, one with the Seattle Mariners. And I blew my elbow in 1995, and that pushed me into business. And so Country Boy from off the farm has now went and done business in 90 countries, seminars in 20 countries, have really trained people from all over the world, all walks of life, multiple languages. And here, guess what? It's all about that knowledge. That's why I love what you do, Michelle. Well, Jay, I was so excited to meet you and to really get to know you because I've been watching you for a long time as a baseball player because – Unfortunately, you didn't play for my team. I'm a Braves fan. Got to go with my, my, my boy, Hank Aaron, you know. But you were phenomenal. And so was able to watch you, but I've watched you transform into this whole business magnet. Now, before we get started, can you tell the folks at home some of the things that you do? You know, right now I've transitioned, like I say, into entrepreneurship. Nobody taught me and like most people how to go develop a business so i had to learn through learning from a mentor and i cannot impress upon everyone the the importance of a mentor when i injured my elbow and i had to get out to what we call real life like all the professional athletes michelle are always like man is it one day we want to get out in the real life you know instead of playing and getting paid to play and so i was freaking out and then i met some entrepreneurs who showed me the importance of systems and automations and how to think. So to get my mindset to be able to make great decisions, to think long-term, to not just run for the paycheck every single week, but to think about building equity and residual income. And that's what I put all my energy into. So now I'm 27 years later. So half my life, I'm 54 years old at the time of this, at the time of this particular awesome podcast. So half my life has been spent as an entrepreneur, Michelle. And now I've owned an amazing production company, a publishing company, a nutraceutical company, a coffee company. I've got about six, seven different brands that have branched out, and have done over a couple billion dollars in revenue. I just so blown away by it, you know, over my career. So I'm excited to, to be able to help other people learn that path. That is absolutely amazing. So today, let's get into some of these questions right now, Jay. The first question I have to ask you, because a lot of people, when you play p professional ball, a lot of people will think that you're not smart or, you know, you're not educated. But it's to the contrary, because not only as an athlete do you have to have mental acuity but you have to as you said grow your passion from that because you're not going to be able to play sports your whole life you have to do something else so did you like reading as a child you know i loved actually i loved reading because reading was learning reading was expansion you know reading took me into you know at, at times me growing up on that small farm it took me to different places around the world because you can read about different places different cultures so reading was so fundamental to me and to and to really invigorate me to aspire to be more so yes i love reading okay so you love reading who were your major influencers on your reading journey? Was it mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whom? 
you know, my major influence, believe it or not, was my 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 original school teachers. That's the real impact of these school teachers. My first grade school teacher, remember to this day, Miss Terry. Miss Terry, she made it so fun about how to learn. You know, getting up there six, seven years old, you don't know what's going on. But she made it fun to learn how you know how to read. So that really was my biggest inspiration. If I had to pin any person down, I go all the way back to first grade, Miss Terry. Well, say hi to Miss Terry out there. Now, what age did you start reading? I, I think I really started getting good, like around six, seven years of age, you know, early on. When I would come home, my grandmother, you know, kind of like with the with the beginning of this introduction, my grandmother grew up to where that suppression was taking place in the South. So she was adamant about her kids and her grandkids learning how to read. So when I would come home, she would participate. Ida May Nolan, she'd be right down there in the trenches with us and really encouraging us to read. She said, this is going to take you places. And, it, and it's, she was right. Now, since your grandma was in the trenches with you and you did that, what was the very first book as a child that you remember that you loved? Do you remember? And, hey, for me, it was those comic books. It was Spider-Man, you know? <laughs> Spider-Man, Superman, you know, I love the comic books, you know, because that really, you know, opened up my mind. So I just kept it simple and I really started collecting comics. If I would have only kept those comics, you imagine what they'd be worth now. I had some of the best comic books. Who knows where they're at now? But it was the comic books, especially Spider-Man. Well, that's how that's part of how I got started. I don't know if I told you, my dad was in the Navy 27 years and that's what we would do. That's how, how he introduced my brothers and I into reading. We would read the comics and he read the funny papers out of the newspaper every week with me. He would sit me on his lap and we would read those comics together. And he gave me the love of comics, the Marvel, the DC, the action comics. And I still have comics. We'll talk about that. Oh, you got the good stuff. I got the good stuff. Now, what's your favorite book as an adult? And if so, what are a couple of titles that you would recommend for the young men out there that are watching this show? This, this is a slam dunk. The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, written in 1910. That is my jam. I love it so much that most people don't know it was public domain up until a certain time. So my publishing company that I own, we went back and we brought that date, that book up to date. And so we made it more universal. You know, in 1910, women couldn't even vote until around 1919, 1920. So the verbiage of, of that day was when a man does this, when a man does that. We went in, I actually personally edited the book and I changed every place where it was when a man does this. And I would say when a person does this, you know, and so I made it inclusive and then it made it more universal. But the principles of that book are so off the charts. You know, Rhonda Byrne from The Secret, she says that that's the book that changed her life. Now, Michelle, when she was talking in her interview on Conscious TV, I was watching her body language and she was meaning what she was saying. She said at the time in 2004, she, you know, she had about two million dollars in debt. She lost her business. Uh, one of her parents just passed away. One of her kids was struggling health wise, and she was just in a, a, an emotional wreck state. She said her our adult daughter handed her an old copy of that book. She read it in about 90 minutes. So it only takes you about a couple of hours to read that book if you focus. She said after she read that book, she said it changed her life and it inspired the secret, which has now exploded all over the all over the earth. So when I heard that, I went in and started studying it. And then I, after about four chapters, I said, I've got to not only uh, reprint this book, I got to teach this book. So I came out with a course called the Science of Getting Rich Mastery course, and I'm doing it daily. So I've got a group of people that are participating in that course, and we're changing lives. Because what that book teaches us, Michelle, is to think the way you want to think regardless of physical appearance. So when you come up on sickness, when you come up on a lack of money, if you can think the way you want to think, which is positive all the way through it, then you will attract the change that you want. So that's what we're teaching. So I highly recommend that book above all books. That's amazing. Now, as a professional in your life and all the things that you do, 
how has reading constructed or put you on the path? Let everybody know, especially because I've got you here because there are a lot of young men out there that don't realize the importance of words, the power in them, and the importance of reading and that knowledge base. So tell everybody how reading has shaped your career and your profession. If you can say the right words at the right time with the right tonality, you can get whatever you want out of this life. That's how important words are. And so when you learn to read and you expand your vocabulary, what you're expanding is your influence, is your power, is your negotiation skills. See, life is all about negotiations. You're not going to get what you want. You're going to get what you deserve. And so by reading and expanding the vocabulary and learning how to place words the right way, I do it every day. I'm doing it right now. I'm literally placing words from things that I have read. You know, these words are coming from things that I have learned to say from reading. So now I'm an international speaker on multiple stages hundreds of thousands of people and they pay me great money. You know, there's sometimes on a weekend, a individual will pay me $3,500 per person. I got one event that I do, Michelle, 3,500 per person. I limit it to 110 seats and I always sell it out. You want to know why? Because I learned how to read the words. I learned how to speak them with the right tonality. And now people want to pay to be able to get that knowledge from the things I learned from reading. And that's why these conversations are so very important. Well, you know what time it is. We got to pay the bills around here. It's time for a commercial break. And we're going to be right back with Jade Nolan on the importance and power of reading. Stay since 1877, Jackson State University has been training students for a life of service and leadership to impact our global society. Ranked among the best HBCUs in the country, Jackson State University offers 47 undergraduate, 37 masters, one specialist, and 13 doctoral degree programs. Whether you're interested in the arts, education, public health, the sciences, or business, we're here to take you from ready to JSU ready. Visit jsums.edu and apply today. All right, everybody, we have a phenomenal show going on right now. We've got Jay Nolan. Jay Nolan is a phenom out of this world, was a pro, pro player for six years, busted an arm, but what? He did not let that stop him. And now he's a speaker, selling out stages wherever he goes, and all because reading is a part of that journey. Jay, thank you so much for joining me again. Now... What do you think about the state of literacy among our children, our adolescents, and our young adults? Where do you think I, we are? I just think it's really lacking because parents are not really having these type of conversations like we're having and the importance. We're kind of leaving it up to the Internet and, and by chance to see if our kids are going to naturally catch on. I've got a son that just turned eight and we homeschool him and we teach him through reading multiple languages. So he's now on his third language. He's fluent in English, he's fluent in Spanish, and now he's learning to become fluent in French. After that, he'll take another language. And so that's why um, it's important to read. And, and the key here is it's important for the parents to take a leadership role and not leave it up even to these schools. When you're sending your kids to schools, we know that the educational system is jacked up. There's a book, Michelle, that everybody should read. It's called the, the Deliberate, let's slow this down, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. It talks about the, like the systematic processes that's been put in place by the governmental systems 
to dumb the people down, to, to control them. You see, if you dumb down your reading, you give up your control. So that's why I think that we got to make a change. So it's not in a good state, but we're the ones that we impact this to make it better. Well, I absolutely agree with you. And I've been saying that for quite a while, which is one of the reasons I wanted to start really having these conversations so we can engage parents and children to let them know that this journey is going to take you to your success. We don't have to worry about the book bans if we're doing what we need to do. And that's leading me into my next question. Do you think it's important to have books in the home for children to access? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. You know, just being leaving them laying around. But then not only leave them laying around, but read them. And then ooh and ah in those books. So my son, a lot of times, I'll pick up somebody reading. I go, ooh. And he go, Daddy, what, 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 what? So make it exciting. So have the books accessible. But as parents, as adults, as aunties, uncles, right, grandparents, you know, caretakers, let's let the kids see that when we're reading something, give some energy to that to, so it makes it exciting for them. That I really think that's important, Michelle. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And because you're talking about the ooh and ah, and that means you're modeling. Your son sees you read. He sees your wife reading. So that way he knows how important this is, and he knows that you're enjoying it. Yeah. And so that makes him want to get up in your lap like, Daddy, come on. I want to yeah. do it with you. Every night he That's wants amazing. me to read that book. Every night he comes in, and we bought him multiple books, and and, and, and I love having that access to you know even Amazon. So we And I'll say, hey. You got, we're going to give you a gift card where you're going to buy, pick out two or three books you like. Make it exciting for them. That is the key. So now, being a male and having a male child, and you know other men, especially having been in the sports world, you know lots of guys have yeah. buddies. What I found is that men, because you guys are into sports and into hunting and gathering and you're always busy, it's hard to quiet the male mind. How can we, as parents and caretakers in the village, help our boys be engaged more in reading, to read better, and to read more? I think, you know, gamify it. You know, a lot of boys are into sports, right? But what they're into is that challenge. And so make book reading fun by gamifying it, make it challenging. You know, I, I literally, I took Portions, portions of the science of getting rich. And I had my son memorize it and I gamified it. I said, there's a mantra in there. Now he was seven at the time. And so this was last year. I gamified it. I said, you know what? I, I don't know if you can get this part down. He go, what, what, what? So it was a little challenge. And then the part where it says there's a thinking stuff from which all things are made, which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. Now, you hear those words? That's a seven-year-old, but I gamified it. I could call him in here right now. We, 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 I, he'll come here, and I'll say, give me the first mantra on it. And he'll give it to us because I gamified it. I said, Michelle, when you can say this mantra, and you can say it eight times in a row without missing a word, then I'm going to bonus you a hundred dollars. Wow. So he's been building up his piggy bank. He's got this one electric car he's wanting to buy. Right. And so he said, a hundred dollars. Hold on. You know, I saw and I'm thinking it's going to take him about probably three, four, five, six months to get this down. Right. So what we did we took and we printed out. This is I'm giving some some advice here, and you don't have to give a hundred bucks. We was like over the top. This is how much I want to invest in my son, his future. So everybody out here listening to me, you figure out what you want to invest. I said that ain't nothing compared to what this can make him become, and how it gives him that discipline. We took and we did prints of that of that particular page, and we laminated it so it couldn't get crinkled up. And then we hand it to him and we said, to study it. Michelle, so we have a, a monitor in his room. So when me and my wife are in our room sleeping, we got a monitor in his room, always able to see what's going on. 
And in the morning, I hear like a little rustling going on, and I look over at the monitor, and I see him grab that lamination, and I see him so that he be reading. There's a thing he stops from which all things, and he was. It took him two weeks. He got it down. Get out of here. Weeks. I mean, I, I'm gonna spit some of it off. There's a thinking stuff in which all things are made, which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. A thought held in the substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought. So just that part. How many people can just spit that off like that? Those are some very tight words. A little bit of older English. He spits it off just like that. No problem. Wow. That's phenomenal. So parents... Jay has given us this great tool right now. Gamify it. Make it challenging because we know the male mind, they like to be challenged. They like to solve problems. Jay, that was absolutely an awesome. I'm going to see come here. Why we done? If he hears, he hears, he'll come in here. Because I just want him to come over to the side because people think I'm playing. I'm telling y'all, he's got it now. Oh, oh, trust me, after the after the break, I want you to bring him in because okay. I want everybody to see how phenomenal this child is and how phenomenal what you and your wife have done to make sure that he's ready to go to the next level. He's his mindset. He knows his reading journey already and he knows how important it is. I'm blown. I, I'm blown away. But before we, we keep doing it, we keep doing it. Oh, yeah. But before we go to commercial break. I want you to tell two of your companies how people can get your products right now and some of the things that you're doing. You know, we I, I'm big time in the coffee industry. Oh, well, Kai, can you get Kai for me, please? I'm big time in the coffee industry. And so we just released a brand new coffee. It's called, you know, it's Vibra 360 is the, the brand. So V Black, V Latte. We, we're willing to give everyone free samples. So we made up, you know, thousands of these pa sample packs that if people go over to my vibra v is in vance i b r a 360.com my vibra 360.com go over you got a week supply of samples for free it's just a small little shipping and handling charge it's a small one like five bucks or something like that and you get a whole week sample for free so that's one company that we would love your support one second sir and then um also, you know, we have a mentorship platform. So you're talking about what you're doing now is we're mentoring folks. So if people go over, you see the website there, xpmentor.club. They can get information about our mentorship platform. I put together some of the most powerhouse entrepreneurs in the world that will be able to deliver stuff from A to Z, stuff they're not teaching in school, stuff like you're not getting. You got to get on these shows like Michelle's running to get the good stuff here. But we got a mentorship platform. We can get you hooked up, xpmentor.club. That's amazing. All right, everybody, you know we got to pay the bills. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with the importance and power of reading. Hi, I'm Michelle the Computer Lady, author and children's book publisher of the Mommy Readers Collection series of books. Well, we know how important it is for us to read, but we also know how important our public hospitals are. We're here in Atlanta. My public hospital is Grady. They saved my life and I would like to give back and I need your help to do so. I've created a new fundraiser called Building Towards Our Future. And what's going to happen is we're going to make sure you and I together that Grady keeps on serving the marginalized, the poor and the indigent in the Atlanta metro area. All right, stay tuned for more announcements I'm going to be telling you how real soon. Thank you for joining me in this fight to make sure that we can live with Grady. Folks, welcome back. If you're not hyped up on this series yet, you should be. Jay Nolan is knocking it out the park. Not only that, I think we're going to have a sneak peek because he's going to bring his son on and we're going to continue this conversation because he is doing great things with reading the power of it and how he's teaching his child. The child now knows 
three languages, not one, not two, not three. And he's only eight years old. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jay, best interview ever. I am, I'm over the yeah. moon right now because you That's know awesome. how much I'm learning. Yeah, you love learning, you love reading. You know, I caught my son was down there playing, but I said, just in case people don't, I'm going to have him just say a couple of the verses in here. This is that that challenge. So can I come real quick, if you don't mind? This is my son, Kai Nolan. Say hello. Hello. Hi, Kai. Right. So Kai, why don't you tell him about the thinking stuff? Why don't you give him a shot? There's a thinking stuff from which all things are made, which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that's imagined by the thought. <laughs> that part right there. Where it goes, huh? <laughs> and that's what I'm telling folks. That right there, when we are engaging our kids, when we are engaging and we're sitting there with them, that we're giving them this energy, we are making them great. We're elevating our communities. Jay Nolan, that was amazing. I, I'm on fire right now. I'm on fire. Hey, and you, got, you got to think about what he was saying. He said, a thought held in this substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought. So what I taught him, I said, so what's the substance, Kai? What is the thinking stuff, right? The original thinking stuff from which all things are made, right? Somehow or another, whether you think there's a creator, a Big Bang or whatever, from which all things are made, that energy is still here, right? I said, now, what is it, son? And he goes, he's sitting there thinking like that. And I said, go like this. And he starts reaching and grabbing. I said, what are you reaching and grabbing? He said, air. I said, can you escape air? He says, no. I said, so what's the thinking stuff? He said, oh, it's the air. I said, so what if we take all the air? I mean, you can't see it, but what if we take all the air out of the room that you or I are in right now? We will die. Exactly. That's telling us that the living substance is actually living. And what most people are not understanding is when you think negatively, that air is going to vibrate and grab that and give you more negative. Correct. When you think positive and you hold it, you hear what he said? A thought held in this substance. So whatever you concentrate on, whatever you are focused on, it comes true. So that's a little seven-year-old that just turned eight. He now believes that he has to control his thoughts because it's going to produce whatever he thinks. Now, what where did that come from, Michelle? From what you do, you teach about reading. See? Started with reading, sis. And we have to get there. Now, now that we've gotten into this and you, you, I got an extra bonus because you brought your son on as like a special guest. What guidance would you give the parents of both boys and girls in how to engage and get their children to read better, especially since you're homeschooling? Yeah. You know, the key here is you got, you got to love them, really love them. Most people just say, well, I love them, but do you love them enough to want them to become the most that they can be. It's impossible in this world to become the most without you learning how to read. Why do you think in the slave days they wouldn't allow the slaves to read? Because obviously reading has power. So we as parents, we're going to empower our children by making sure that it's exciting, it's fun you see how excited i am about this like when i did this with my son like this i high five him you know but where else do they do that they do it in sports so exactly. gamify it. you see what i'm saying like do like just do it my wife she puts she literally puts sticky notes of different words from either english or spanish or french she'll put them stick them up around the house and then she'll say okay there's 20 words up there when you do that you get a special toy when you can say all 20 but spread them out, make it like a treasure hunt for words. The key here is make them want to read what words. And so that's some things I would advise. That is amazing. Now, Jay, you and I both know that STEM is now, but it's also the future. 
how can we get our children, grab them and get that thirst for knowledge to learn STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, so they'll have a better life and they can elevate the communities. Lead by example. I think as adults, we can't lose sight of what it took for us to learn how to read. Well, let's stay sharp. As adults, let's get into it. Let's do STEM. What if our kids caught us doing STEM? Like, what are you doing over there? I'm doing, hey, I'm doing what you, what you should be doing. And what I want you to, hey, you like this? And then make it exciting. The key here is make it exciting. Like give it some, like when you're, when you're picking up a book or you're doing a scientific project that you might just order something from Amazon one time and make it be like a kid kid, but get two or three, then make one just for you and don't show them theirs. And then you pull out, you start doing that. What are you doing? I'm working my, I'm working with my kid. I'm working my science kid. I thought that was for me. No, 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 no. This is for me. We can get you one later. And they, they were like, because what? They don't want to miss out. Exactly. That's how we gamify. I love it. The other thing is, just on an everyday basis, if you're cooking, cooking is a science. You're baking. Baking is a science. Yes. Going to the restroom is a science. People don't even realize all the things that are involved in the plumbing process. Right. It's all part. And we talking about, you talked about air. You talked about energy. Hydrology is a science. Yes, and yes. every time you give them that knowledge, you can get some basis behind it. So you talk, talked about how the air, everything we breathe, everything we do, and if they pull that air out of the room, what would happen? But also talk about what's in air. Water right. molecules are in air. Right. Hydrogen is in air. Right. Nitrogen right. is in air. All part of the science. All Little hard. bitty things every day. I love it. Boom. Yeah. Now, I know you kind of told us, but let's make it clear to the audience. As a parent, how do you make sure that your son reads well and reads more often every day? I make them read it back. I don't leave them alone in the room by themselves all the time. You know, here's your study. Here's your project. And then helping them out with it. And then easing off a little more, but then just showing up out of the blue going, hey, read that sentence to me. If you can read all five of these sentences, then you know what? We're going to do something special. Boom. Gamify it. I'm telling you, you can just buy some of the cheapest little things and go, I'm going to give you one of these little cool coins every time you hit the mission. And then, it's, but if you don't get it, you got to give me a coin back. And then, but once you have X amount of coins that you've accumulated, then you get the big prize. Maybe I take you to Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. So just, you know, I just really encourage parents to gamify it. Kids love to be intrigued. They don't want to be bored. You make it, un you make it not fun, then you're going to make them not want to participate and read. And you're hurting them there. So let's make it fun. Well, Jay, you know what? 30 minutes flies by so fast. Before we leave, I want you to give every parent out there, every caregiver, every person in the village, three points to take with them on a book that they can read, on a book that they can read with their child, and making sure that their children are reading back to them. You go. Well, I just gave you an example. I want you to get Science of Getting Rich. I've actually, our version of it, if you go over to getsogr.com, getsogr.com, you can order the book from there because it'll take you right over into Amazon, but you'll also have some special bonuses there where you can get the history behind the book. We did a, we did a video on the life of Wallace D. Waddles and the progression of these giants like Bob Proctor, like Napoleon Hill, you know, how did they get impacted? So you can learn about that. Now, I studied the book, but I communicate with my child just like I'm talking to an adult. So I'm, I'll say, you know what that means? And then I've got the audio book version where I, every time I'm taking a shower, they, he hears me with that audio book playing. I don't know any time, I can't remember any time I'm taking a shower that I don't have the science of getting rich audio book playing. I don't know any time. And so when he walks by, then all of a sudden I'm drying off and I'll say, I'll say, hey, come here. And he'll come in and I'll say, listen to this part. 
And I'm going to say, all right, listen up to the part where you got something that you can tell me what the meaning is. So I'll let him sit there. He'll be sitting there listening. And then what's he doing? He's listening to learn to teach. So because I challenge him that way and I don't let him leave until he gives me something back, then he's learning more. So as parents, challenge your children by you leading by example. That is the greatest advice I could give you. And it works. Jay, you have blessed us with this interview. You bless my soul. Remember, everybody, he's got XP Mentor. And what's your other business, your coffee company? Get over there to myvibra360.com. Support the people that support you. Yeah. Jay has given us so much value. Thank you so much for joining me for this presentation. I really appreciate it, and I'm humbled, and I'm grateful. Thank you so much. Hey, I was glad to be here. Parents, let's go. Now, everybody, we're having these conversations because it's so vital and so important. What I want you to do is take this time, bring your children around and watch this together, and then start to pick out books for you and your child in order for you to enjoy and know the importance and power of reading. We'll see you next week. Are you a company, business, or service that believes in social responsibility? Would you like to make a positive impact? You can. You can sponsor this program and be seen by 2 million viewers on the PIC TV network. Call 770-367-1268 for more information today. You know what's going on in our society, book banning, and over 38 million children don't have books in their homes. Join me for some exciting segments as we talk about the importance and power of reading with my guest, Dr. Lane Rowland, PhD, MD, on the PIC TV Network, Channel 1000.